Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. We've had our first taste of winter weather, so here are some tips to remember so that we all have a safe winter. Avoid parking on city streets when it snows, but if you must, please park on the north or west side of the street. That leaves room for snow removal crews to do their job. If vehicles are parked on both sides of a narrow street, they may not leave enough space for the snow plow and that street might have to be skipped. Do not park on signed emergency snow routes. Vehicles parked on those routes may be ticketed or towed during snowstorms. Please wait 36 hours after snow stops falling to call 311 or tweet to at KCMO311 about slick spots or missed streets. This gives snow removal crews time to complete multiple passes on all assigned routes. If a crew is taken off of its assigned route to tackle individual requests, it will delay the entire snow operation. Also, keep children from playing in snowbanks along the road. It's enticing because those large piles of snow seem like a big giant fort, but it's also very dangerous. Children may tumble onto the road in front of cars or snow plows. Be a good neighbor and remove snow and ice from any sidewalks on your property, whether residential or business, within a reasonable time after a snowfall. And also be sure to help your neighbors who can't do it for themselves. During every snowstorm, we post updates on the city's snow page at kcmo.gov snow. And you can follow the city of Kansas City, Missouri on Twitter and Facebook or subscribe to Kansas City's Nixle messaging system for text message updates. The Republic Center for Digital Government just named Kansas City one of the country's top-ranked digital cities. The 2014 Digital City Survey placed the city of Kansas City, Missouri in second place just after Los Angeles. Kansas City's emergence as a leader in the digital city movement follows the arrival of Google Fiber for local homes and the recently announced Gigabit Internet Business Class service. This award is further evidence that Kansas City is becoming known as America's creative crossroads, a place where art and technology converge. Congrats to the city's digital team and the chief innovation officer. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place for your family at City Facilities during this year's holiday season. The Mecham High Performance Auto Auction rolls into Bartle Hall December 4th through 6th. The Mecham Auction Company is the world leader of collector car, vintage and antique motorcycle and road art sales hosting auctions throughout the United States. The company, which began in 1988 as a family business around the kitchen table, has been specializing in the sale of collector cars for 27 years. All buyers, sellers, and spectators are welcome to attend Meekum's Kansas City 2014 auction. You can go to Meekum.com for additional event information. Motown the Musical comes to the Music Hall December 9th through 14th. It began as One Man's Story, became everyone's music, and is now a Broadway musical. Motown Musical is a true story of Motown founder Barry Gordy's journey from featherweight boxer to the heavyweight music mogul who launched the careers of Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, Smokey Robinson, and many more. Motown shattered barriers, shaped our lives, and made us all move to the same beat. Now experience it live on stage in the record-breaking smash hit, Motown the Musical. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com or at the Municipal Auditorium box office. Come cheer on UMKC's men's and women's basketball during December at the historic and newly renovated Municipal Auditorium. This venue, according to many fans, is the best arena in which to watch basketball. In 2006, the facility replaced the playing court, and in the fall of 2013, a $5 million renovation included upgrades such as new video boards, sound and lighting systems, new seating in the lower level, and more. For ticket information and game dates, go to umkckangaroos.com. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 
513-5000. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to Davidson Park. Uh, my name is Mark McHenry with the Kansas City Parks and Recreation Department and uh, glad to be here today. Whoever planned the weather, great job. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful uh, fall day in Kansas City. I uh, Glad to be here. I uh, was talking to Richard King earlier and he and I share one thing in common. Our kids went to school at Davidson Elementary School back like 30 years ago or whenever that was, 25 years ago. So we have a little connectivity to your neighborhood and I think you've taken good care of the neighborhood. It looks really great around here and we appreciate the opportunity. I have with me today Heidi Downer who heads up our marketing division and Jesse Frazier who heads up videography for KC Parks and Recreation. Also Kevin Evans is with us. Kevin's right. Right Park here. District Manager. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and Erica Flatt, who's also on our staff. She's a landscape architect. I know she did the design and implementation of the project. So, uh, with that, I'm going to turn. Uh, this is not really the uh, the microphone. It's the scissors. But we're going to pretend it's the the uh, microphone, and uh, we're going to be using it here shortly. And we're going to turn it over right now to Councilman Scott Wagner. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's an old saying that you shouldn't run with microphones. <laughs> and, and so this proves it well. Uh, thank you all uh, for allowing us to be out here and celebrate this event with you today. Um, I, I'd love to say that I worked really hard on this, but I didn't. Uh, really, it was all of you. And I know that this was a project that, that Kim and the Park Department um, Nancy over here, all of you, Kevin, um, worked on so very, very hard. And, and I, really, I'm just grateful to be able to be here with you because I know how much this means to you. Uh, from being in your neighborhood meetings and talking about it and wondering how do we do this, and, and here we are on a wonderful sunny day. So, so this is really um, more for you and, and the fact that I can be here today uh, with my family, and, and um, this is my son Patrick, who when he comes on these sorts of things, I put him to work, and so here he is uh, holding this end of it, but, uh, but um, it's, it's a delight to be with you, and, and um, you know, that people talk about what uh, elected officials do, but at the end of the day, it's what our community does that makes this city such a great place, so thank you for doing what you've done, and with that, um, do I hand over these scissors? You can give those to Kim. I'll give oh, them to Kim me? now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's your opportunity. No, I, this has been two years in the big. making, and if it wasn't for my neighbors, Tanya Sapp, Julie Cox, and Nancy Elder, Wattenbarger, my husband and my kids who put up with me constantly robbing them of weekends and evenings, all of you have made this possible, and we'd just like to take this time to publicly thank uh, Mark McHenry and the rest of the Park and Rec staff, our landscape architect Erica Flad, uh, Heidi Downer for scrambling to get this done with us at the last minute, and our PIAC representative Paul and Scott Wagner for actually recommending this. This is a process. They had to recommend us to uh, the city council who had to look at their budget and make room for us, and they did. So thank you, thank you, thank you from all of our community. Yeah. All right. Well, Paul wasn't going to say anything, but I'm going to ask Paul to say one thing, and, and what he's going to do, he's going to talk about this baseball team we got. Oh, yeah. well, that's real easy. Just go Royals. That's it. I do want to say this is a great example of a neighborhood identifying a need and seeing it as a possibility rather than as a complaint. I just want to commend you for coming together and, and really pursuing and, and look behind us here at, at the results, and I just want to congratulate you all. All Thank right, you all. all right. Thank you. In observance of the Thanksgiving Day holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Thursday, November 27th and Friday, November 28th. Residents' trash and recycling collections will be delayed just one day. Thursday, curbside trash and recycling collection will take place instead on Friday the 28th, and Friday collections will occur on Saturday the 29th. In addition, the Household Hazardous Waste Facility will be open Monday through Wednesday, but it will close on Thursday the 27th through the following Tuesday the 2nd in observance of the holiday. The city's fall curbside leaf and brush collection allows residents to leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb for pickup. Did you know that raking up leaves helps prevent clogged up stormwater pipes? You can help prevent backups in your own neighborhood when you participate in the annual leaf and brush pickup. 
Residents who live in the city's central zone will receive their collection the week of December 1st. Residents who live in the city's south zone will receive their collection the week of December 8th. And residents who live in the city's north zone will receive collection the week of December 15th. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.gov. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.